My grandfather, John Duncan, was a surveyor. He served, this used to be Hardin County, and he surveyed it off and made it LaRue County. And the reason they named it LaRue, there was more families with the name of LaRue here than, than any other family. My name is Roscoe Duncan. I was born on 12230. I was born and raised on Farrell Hill. My parents were Clarence and Della Duncan. Dad had a 130 acre farm. He was good to me. He didn't talk much. So many things I wished I had asked him. Kid like, you know. But he started it used to be a college up here on School Hill, East Lynn College, and he went there for a while studying to be a doctor and decided it wasn't for him, he wanted to farm. Never had a vacation, never was out of the state. We didn't have electricity in the barn. I never did get to play sports because school was out. I had hogs to feed, cows to milk, and whatever, you know, farm chores. But uh, farm life was wonderful. Had them old push real lawnmowers. So I was more in the widow's yard, you know. Big deal, quarter of a yard. But I was, the rest of the kids, too lazy, work. And I was the only kid come to town with money jingling in my pocket. A lot of old stores had big uh, front porches all through there. And then on summertime, Friday night and Saturday nights, a bunch of get together, black and white. Had a jamboree down there. It was real nice. There, across from the uh, fruit stand, you know, I, I don't know whether that old bridge still there or not. Well, that's people sit on the bank and chairs and this, that, and other. And the, down there on the bridge, they had the screen set up, had free movies. 470 was cobblestone, and it was real rough. And then after the county got a little money then, they started buying crushed rock and uh, bluff right down here where they got an awful lot of the stone out of there. And uh, we never did have any rattlesnakes on the farm. And they all that dynamite and everything and it run, our fence line went right straight up to our farm. So then after all that blasting and everything, we started having rattlesnakes in. We didn't have electricity until 38. And, uh, and then as soon as we could, uh, mom bought a television. We got three stations, three channels. We always had a radio. Always had dogs, cats. My grandfather didn't have any horses. He had big old walks and, and uh, they were gentle as cats, but I was scared to death of them things. Club-footed things. Long hair. Heels everywhere, but in behind the house, you go up through the wooded deer there where he'd been cleaned off. And he had 40, 50 acres up there as level as this uh, floor. We'd always go to Hart County. My mother had nine brothers and sisters, and we were a big family, two-story log house. So, went on Thanksgiving, and I uh, was gonna come back on Sunday for another gathering. So my grandmother taught me a notion staying. The first time I'd ever been away from home. And uh, it was winter time. Woke up the next morning, had some cover on, couldn't hardly turn it over, but there was snow on my on the cover. And you could see up through the ceiling, it had no wood single ceiling, and it was rotted out, and you could see the sky through there. That was the last time I spent the night there. At Christmas, we got a banana, an orange, and an apple, small toy. There wasn't no presents to mount to anything. And a good meal, that was, that was about our Christmas. Well, when I started school in 36, 
I started in uh, East Lynn College, had classes there for several months, and then we went into the new building. Uh, the lodge hall was on top, upstairs. The old gym is set to the left of where the school is. As you go into the school on the left, Billy Brooks's grandfather, Harvey Willen's grandfather, had two of the largest tractors in the area. So they uh, cut those trees, laid them down, jacked that building up, and put it on some uh, rails and then pulled it down to the where it is now. And they pull it up so far and then they'd pull the logs out and swing them around and readjust them, you know. So that was interesting because that's the first tractor work I ever got to see. I had to quit in a sophomore year. Uh, my dad got d disabled and I had to, had, to, had to quit school to start farming. Worked an awful lot of times, 50 cents a day, long days. Uh, I told some of them at GE about it. They said, we wouldn't have done it. And I said, if you'd eat, you had to. And it was a going wage. We cut the back up, cut the back in a lot of days. Finally got up to nickel a stick. Finally, and then 10 cents a stick. I know some of them can <coughs> make over $100 a day. People around here mostly took care of tobacco to Greensburg. Others to Glasgow, and that was the two, two of the closest markets. Joyce Prell and I were friends for years and years and years, but he uh, started out with nothing. Very poor family, but he always, when he could, he'd work. They'd been farmers, and then we started working with the same guy and uh, taking eggs to Louisville, selling them to subdivisions. He'd get one side street and I'd get the other and one woman complained one day that she found a chicken in one of the eggs. He said, oh my goodness, said, I'm gonna have to tell the boss said, if we start selling meat with the eggs, we're gonna have to start charging more. She gave him a kiss and told him I'd never come back. <laughs> Oh, uh, <clears throat> J.T. Straley, Daredevil. His father rode a motorcycle. Phone service was bad, but he bet someone in Hodgenville hundred dollars. He gave a phone number in Campbellsville or Mount Sherman, and uh, bet him a hundred dollars to call that number. He'd answer it, and uh, so the guy took him up and. He rode that motorcycle through here and answered that phone. I've seen him come by here standing up on the seat, bent over, still holding to the handlebar. I used to ride motorcycles too, but I didn't stand up. The uh, old phone service used to, individuals had to keep up the phone lines, and uh, JT would fly his airplane, sliding the wing down, down the water, and come to the post, he'd hop it up like that. He was a daredevil. He had an airplane, did crop spraying, and uh, he bought a larger plane. This was on Saturday, and uh, we lived in an apartment down in Buffalo then. And I was eating breakfast, and he went over and circled the house, and uh, I had a strange feeling. And I stood there and watched him go out of sight. And. Uh, Crashed burn up. Well, I knew my wife for years, and we, we dated about six years before we were married. The night Donna was born, like lost my wife and Donna both at childbirth. They had a name 410, but he had probably some other kind of name now. And 
hospital bill, everything was $50. So Donna cost $50. And uh, my father-in-law was there, and he looked over and said, boy, you got any money? I said, yeah. He said, I want to pay for my first grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, paid $50 for her. Thank God, <laughs> she was the best daughter I could ever have, anybody could ever have. Well, I worked at our <clears throat> service station for 10 years, down there where the water office is now. There's John T. Mears. I left there, and started building kitchen cabinets in Louisville. I always left woodworking. And in a very short time, I was building as many cabinets in eight hours as their top man had been there 25 years. That's how well I liked it. Making big time money. And uh, some of them been there for years said that the old man had four high roller boys. They said, when the old man dies, said this place will go under. Well, I didn't feel too secure of the end, so the guy that worked there, I missed him for a few days. He called me one night and wanted to know how I'd like to have a job at GE. And I said, oh man, I'd love that. He said, get up here. I said, they're really hard. So I went up there and filled the application in. I interviewed that day and went back the next day for physical. And just a few days later, I was working. I worked at GE for 19 years. In 1969, there was several running for sheriff. So Guy came over and talked me in notion going with him. So we, there were six tickets running. So primary election, we won by 12 votes. General election, we won by 11. So the sheriff said, I <laughs> said, so what I mean? He said, we lost. <laughs> one of our supporters must have died. The sheriff I was working for at that time was B.F. Brown. Then you couldn't succeed yourself, so it was my time, seniority-wise, to run, and I just chose not to. And then uh, Billy Duncan ran. Billy Duncan ran with B.F. and us, so I was with Billy Duncan four years as a deputy, and then he ran for sheriff, and I worked with him four years as a deputy. But that was an interesting eight years. Drugs was just getting started good. And we didn't uh, know what marijuana looked like, this, that, and the other. And we made a big raid and got some seed and dope too. So I planted some out here in flower bed, five plants, where me and the troopers could look at it at different stages, see what it looked like and everything. And, uh, then it got up to where it was showing to where people passing could see it. So I told them one evening, I said, let's go over and destroy that marijuana. So I took it out. I just had bought a riding, my first riding lawnmower. And uh, we pulled it up and laid it out there and run over it, ground it up. I told them, I said, hey, if I could sold that, that paid my lawnmower. People, it's never been involved that don't realize what law enforcement is. Before William Pickard got, state trooper got killed, he and I got, went on a call out on 210. I called him, and a guy had been drinking, shot up the house. So we went out on 210, and I was in front, so I turned my lights off before I pulled in the driveway so he wouldn't know I was coming. And, uh, and then he did too. So we walked down the sidewalk, we ducked down under the, under the window, and then went up there and knocked on the door. And he said, Rocky, said, some of these nights, some of us are gonna get killed doing this. And a week later, the same hour, he got shot, killed. The guy in Hardinville shot him with a double barrel shotgun right in the stomach. In 1985, Don and Tom had a farm down here. And the tobacco barn was up on the hill, and we were stripping tobacco. And I had my truck up there with tobacco on it, so I walked down the hill, and one of the girls' tricycle 
handlebars come loose. So I went up there and got some tools to tighten that. And uh, I had a heart attack going up that hill. Fell in the mud and manure and whatever. And that wasn't no fun either, but they said within two years I'd have to have an artificial heart or a transplant or something. And uh, I proved them wrong on that. Outlived two of my heart doctors and said I wouldn't be living now. I've always got a joy out of proving people wrong. <laughs>